All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, first, I want to thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate it. You know, coming on to the Lockout Men podcast show, sharing uh, sharing your uh, experience with us, man. Uh, first thing first, before we get into anything, man, I want to I want to tell you your 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 TikToks and and your personality on on the app, man. Is is like it's like energetic, man. Like, have yeah. you ever thought? Have yeah. you ever thought of? Have you have you before you started TikTok, have you were you on any other uh, platform before you started TikTok? I was, I was, man. Uh, I've always had a Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, had Insta, but I really wasn't too active on it, right? Mm -hmm. And before all of this, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So I know speaking. And, you know, being interactive with people, making them engage, using my voice, something that's free, I knew that was power. So by um, having these abilities, I thought I was going to be a motivational speaker. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, seriously, right? So um, I was working at Serta, and I've been driving for a minute, man, but I'll just get right into that part right there. But while I was working at Serta in 2016, well, um, before before a, be, before you get into all that, let's let's introduce yourself. So okay. go on, yeah, so go ahead and introduce yourself, and then run run into what you used to do before you got into trucking. Uh, what did I do before trucking? Yeah, what what did you do before you get before you got into trucking? But introduce yourself Just, first. Uh, that, well, everybody, I'm Michael Williams. All right, Michael Williams, the guy from Real Results. I used to be known as Mike the Driver. But I'm more than just the driver, so we're going by my original, Mike the Williams, the government. <laughs> so, um, man, I've done AC work, construction work. Uh, I've also had jobs at utility trailers, man, just all jobs. But I didn't know what I was going to do, mm -hmm. who I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I had that mentality like yeah, a lot of people, you know, some of us, hey, um, as long as I'm getting something, something is better than nothing. Right. You know, so. That's why I was bouncing around, and you know, as a, whenever you're young, trying to find your direction, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what I was doing before trucking. All right. So, what what made you, what motivated you to get into trucking? <laughs> really, my mom was pushing trucking. You know, she was like, "Hey, man, you can't afford." I'm from a small town called Abbeville, Louisiana, right? Mm -hmm. So, she was like, "Man, uh, you cannot get in trouble." You know, you can't go to jail. You know, I've also had, like, good schooling that they paid for, and I just decided not to use doing it with it. So, so they had guys that were older than me that was with my uncle, and they were doing hot shot trucking. Mm -hmm. So I also did that for a minute without having, you know, on CDL because it was under the weight limit, right? Right. So... I'm doing this, these little hot shot runs, and a guy was telling me, he said, man, just go get your CPL, go get your Class A. And this was in 2010. So I'm like, okay, all I really need is a C or something like that to do hot shot. He said, man, when, if you're in school, would you start with a C grade or would you go with the A if you had a choice? Mm. I said, I'll go with a Class A. You go with he the said, A. All right, then. You I'm ain't going to waste, you're, you're not going to waste all that money for a C <laughs> or a B, man. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You might as well go for thought. the shoot. You might as well go for the whole shebang. That's what's up. Yeah, man. So whenever he told me that, I'm like, man, that made a lot of sense, right? Mm -hmm. So I went with the A, got everything, got all my endorsements, you know, and boom, I've been trucking ever since. So did you? So did you go? So did you go to school to get your license, yeah. or did you go to a trucking company to get your license? I went to actual school. It was called. Uh, LTC out of Crowley, Louisiana. Right now they call it SLCC, South Louisiana Community College. Okay. And I went on a grant, right? Like whenever they were starting with the, the grants through mm -hmm. the workforce. Mm -hmm. So um, all you had to do was pass and get your, uh, what is that, your permit, your CDL permit. Right. You know, pay for your UA, your DOT physical, all of that good stuff. Right. You know. The pre-entry stuff, you know, you do that right there and show me you're serious, we're going to go the rest of the way. So whenever I did that, that's whenever all the rest of the money came in. And really and truly, I paid $75 for my CDL. 
That was it. Seventy-five dollars out of pocket, and everything else was through the grant. Yeah, they reimbursed my uh, my gas for the commute back and forth, mm -hmm. food every day, all of that. Okay, okay. So that's what's up. And this is back when twenty ten. Twenty ten. That was a real good deal. All right. So twenty ten, twenty twenty one. So what? Eleven years. Yeah, in the game. <laughs> all right. So bouncing, uh, bouncing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What? Tell me a time, you know, tell me a company that 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 you like working with versus a company that you that you don't think you're going to ever go back to. I'm, I can't really bad mouth companies like that, but mm -hmm. uh, the guy that I started with and but I, I really respect him. Right. Mm -hmm. he, the guy named uh, it was Glenn. The company was called um, Gulf South All Field and Riggin. The okay. company is no longer around. But this guy had this when I first was introduced to the company Ideal Lease, uh, and I was driving brand new Peterbilts around that time, you know, stretch nose, clean refrigerator, mm. woofers in the back, and mm. and we were going everywhere. Okay. But the only thing he was real arrogant, you know, he was a white guy. He was arrogant. He had a lot of money, a lot of money mm. from where I'm from, and all uh, flatbed work. So. All I remember was do never do not run your truck less than three dollars and seventy five cents a mile. Okay. So so at you this so at here, this time you you learning you learning not only to drive the truck but you're you're learning the business aspect of it as well. Exactly. I'm learning what rates per mile was. Mm -hmm. All of this. I'm learning how to dispatch my own loads. You know they gave me the authority and like the freedom to do this because they seen that you know I had ambition. And so all it of really this wasn't a problem. And all of this straight out of school, bro. Straight out of school. When I tell you, uh, <laughs> less than three months out. I remember my first load that I've ever taken. I didn't know how to strap. <laughs> they didn't <laughs> teach me how to strap, right? Right. <laughs> that's crazy. I didn't properly strap right, man. So the load that I had, I was like, Nah, man, that's not how you do it. You know, it has to go X amount of feet. Right. You know. <laughs> so I'm like, man. Oh, they didn't show us this. And whenever I was doing hot shot, you know, they just told me, hey, man, just throw two straps on. All it is is one pallet, small truck, you know, with the flatbed on the back, throw two straps on, you're good to go. Okay. You know, that's what I knew for that. So that was the routine. You know, it was something that was second nature. But whenever you're dealing with a 40 foot, 48 foot, you know, that's a different ball game. All right. So this, so your your first time out, this is this is all doing a uh, hot shot. You you you're in a you're in a pickup truck with a with a, with a with a what forty foot trailer on the back. Yeah, yeah. But within gooseneck, exactly. But within but within that spectrum right there, you you were still learning how to how to pick loads, how to dispatch load, or how to pick your own dispatch. Uh, what? Well, at this time here, excuse me, at this time here, mm -hmm. whenever I did the 40-foot gooseneck, like, that was like my, I had two, two to three runs in Louisiana mm -hmm. with the dually and the gooseneck. After that, when they seen I can handle that trip, I immediately went on a team run to North Dakota, Kill Deer, North Dakota. <laughs> right out, straight out back, man. I was nervous. What team team in a in a in a pickup truck though for real? No 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 no. Oh, not in a pickup truck. Not in a pickup truck. Oh, After a... I did two to three loads with the dually and the forty foot gooseneck, the guy said, "Can he handle it?" Because you know, of course, he sent someone with me to monitor. Oh, and then, then he put you in the in in the yeah. semi. Exactly. Okay. So he said, "Can he handle it?" Yes, he can handle it, man. Now the semi was automatic. This was the first time I was introduced to automatic. Mm -hmm. One uh, older automatic. When I tell you, you put it in gear and you give it a little bit of gas, fuel, mm -hmm. man, it's gonna rock like a bull at a rodeo. All right. Now, what about now? What about your license? Are, are you are you restricted or no? No. Okay. So you so you can rock a a, a manual if need be. Of course. Okay, that's what's that's what up. I have right now. Yeah, yeah, I oh, wouldn't okay. buy an automatic. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. All right, so, uh, so, you know, starting out with the one company that's that's no longer, uh, that's no longer in service right now. What we'll, what will be a company that uh that you don't have to badmouth it because that's not what we're about. But what will be a right. company that 
that you don't that that you don't. I'm glad you asked. Want to go I have back? One to. in mind. This guy's name. Uh, it was called Dana Trucking. Mm-hmm. And uh, this, whenever I was introduced to Fifty Fifty, there's something that they do here, mm-hmm. like uh, in Houston. They'll do 50-50 with a driver. Even though you might not uh, have anything to do with the truck, they expect you to pay 50% of the fuel and mm-hmm. 50% of your money comes out with insurance and all of that weekly. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. You? Yeah. Th- this ain't your truck, though. Not my truck. Not your exactly. truck. Exactly. But he wants you to pay 50% of the fuel, 50% of the truck, no, 50% of the of everything else that goes with it. Exactly. Well, just the diesel, the diesel and the insurance. That's what they expect you to pay, right? But get this. At the end of the year, even though you gave 50%, you cannot claim the diesel. What? Right? For your taxes because they're 1099 in you. Yeah, it's crazy, man. <laughs> nah, yeah, I'm, this, I'm, is something, this is something that's real popular in Houston. I, I'm, I'm assuming that's a company you, you, you're not going back to. I would never. I wouldn't refer him to my worst enemy. <laughs> All right, man. So let's uh, let's pick it up to uh, let's pick it up to twenty. You know, the twenty twenty one, man. You um, you you're owner op. Uh, what's right. the name? What's what's the name of the company, man? Real Results Transportation LLC. Real Results Transportation. Where are you located at? Located out of Houston, Texas. Out of Houston, Texas. All right. So, what uh, what made you decide to put uh, Real Results Trucking together, man? When, how how did that come about? I knew I couldn't work for anybody the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I just knew that's what it was. The company name, if that's what you're asking me, uh, we got that name because my wife had an email, you know, and it was Real Results with a different name at the end. So I said, you know what, babe. This is it right here. This is going to be our company, and we're just going to run with it. I felt like it was something that was going to attract attention, but we both did. And a lot of times, a lot of brokers, they always ask, do you give uh, what your company says? You're talking about real results? Of course we do. Give us a load. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. So real results, real results tra- uh, trucking LLC out of Houston. Or, I mean, out of Houston, Texas, man. What about – um? What 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 about real results that 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 you can that you can tell us, man? Like, you you started this company when back back when? We started this company December of two thousand and eighteen, mm-hmm. and we uh we had a glitch for a second, and I, I it broke up on the question. Oh, okay, I said when did you when when did you started the uh company back when? Okay, yeah. December of 2018. That's when we started the company. December 14th. Oh, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So you and your how, how you and your wife just came together and just say, yo, let's say bumpy. We we got the trucks. We uh we we just go ahead and uh make the make make this happen. Yeah, let's go ahead and make it happen. You know, um I was tired, like I said, I was telling you before, I was working at Serta. Mm-hmm. And I want to get back to the parts where I was telling you because this all ties in together. Oh, go ahead. So go ahead. Whenever I was working at Serta, I was going to uh, like public speaking classes or mm-hmm. Toastmasters. That's what it was called, Toastmasters. Mm-hmm. And man, this was embarrassing, right? Because I wasn't good at it at all. Everybody, you know, had a professional background that wasn't me. But I know if I put myself in an uncomfortable situation, all I could do is just polish my skills and become better. So that's what I did, and I continued to do it until eventually I fell off, right? right. And when I, I thought I was going to be a motivational speaker, you know, whenever you force something and it's not actually for you, it's not organic, not genuine, mm-hmm. then you're not going to have a lot of content. And that's what it was. Like I was trying to force material. So that's why this is coming so easy because I feel like trucking is what we're supposed to be doing. And really and truly, man, this is how we started rocking and rolling. I depleted my, my 401k, mm-hmm. used the rest of the savings, uh, 
Got some credit cards. <laughs> hey, let's go. <laughs> you say you you just put it all you just put it all on faith, man. When when was the uh when was the turning point for you guys? Mm. Enough was enough, man. You know, I just I wanted to have more time with my family. You know, I, I never want to trade the time. So like right now, I'm trying to I'm working on getting more local work and consistent local work. So that's really what it was, man. I didn't like listening to someone else. You know, nobody, we don't like listening to authority figures, even though we need rules, mm -hmm. you know, to help govern, but nobody likes anyone telling you what to do. So I just got tired of that over time. You know, I didn't like asking for time off, you know? Right. I feel like I deserve more and I need to be in control of my future and my decisions. So that was the turning point. All right. Now, what was that? Since that was the turning point for you, what was the what was the turning point for the for the company when you started seeing success? Hmm. <laughs> Just attraction and people believe in me. And I want to tell you this here, right? We started renting trailers, so I didn't. Uh, I always tell everybody that we talk to, know your equipment, know what you want to do whenever you buy your equipment. Mm -hmm. and know your end goal so the truck that we started with it came from auction you know i didn't believe in spending 40 50 thousand on a truck i didn't believe in that right right so the first rig total it was twenty thousand, right under 20 and we've doubled that and bought more trailers and right now we're in a position to whereas we're about to buy well lease we're about to lease and get some use other and put them use, over the road. use other use other people's money to make money. Exactly. Mm. And their equipment also. Exactly. There's one thing uh a lot of people they feel like um you know hey yeah you can get you a ten or a fifteen or a twenty thousand dollar truck and those might be good trucks for a regional run, but will they hold up over the road? Mm. Do you have a mechanic if you break down, if you're in Ohio, if you're in California? Mm. Do you know somebody reliable that's not going to dig into your pockets? So since you can't say yes to those questions, why not put yourself in a better situation, lease or rent? You know, they have national accounts. They have uh, locations all across the country. They're reliable, and they've vetted all of their mechanics. And their trucks are already up to par with inspections and DOT compliant. So that sounds like a no brainer if you're going over the road. Now for you for the for the for for the information that you uh that you that you putting out there because like I said I, I saw you on TikTok. I I like your energy. I like what you you know I like what you're doing and try to get everybody else to 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 see your vision and everything. Uh what you what you're asking for are you asking for uh, guys to come and and lease on with you, or are you asking for guys for I mean to to come and work for you, like drive your trucks? Now I'm gonna need drivers whenever I lease and we have the contracts. We're working on some stuff mm -hmm. since Atlanta, and we're working on a lot of block loads, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever those right there are sealed and <laughs> locked in then we will be accepting people or drivers to fill these driver seats for the OTR position. But as of right now, if you want to lease on, that's perfect. Definitely do that, right? Okay. If not, if you have your own authority and you need a good dispatcher, we also do that. That's even better because you're worried about your CSA scores, we're worried about ours. So that means we're going to do our job on both sides to make sure we're squeaky clean. That's what's so up. So whichever works, yeah. That's what's up, man. Now, as far as uh, as far as dispatching goes, uh, your your wife handles the the dispatching aspect of uh, of your business, right? We both do. Okay, so we, do, yeah. So when you guys looking for looking for uh looking for drivers, that's you know to come on with you guys. What 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 can you what can you offer them as far as you know as far as uh what what are we doing percentage cent per mile. What 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 are we doing? We're doing percentage. We doing percentage. If they lease on, we do eighty five fifteen. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's so, what's up. Yeah, we're taking care of your IFTA, 
we're negotiating, you know, we're taking care of your factoring, mm-hmm. uh, whatever, whatever you need. We're taking care of all of your paperwork, like uh, your notices, your alerts. If you have anything that's about to expire within the last next 30 days, we're going to notify you, tell you all of this, right? Because we have everything in the file. So whenever it comes 30 days out, we're going to tell you about it. Just want to make sure you have a piece of all right, so yeah, before we had that little brief pause, right quick, um, because you drivers. know, it's, yeah, you you know, it's hard to it, it's it's hard to find good drivers out here, man. You know, companies such as yourself and and small fleet owners is finding it hard to get you know to get drivers on board, man. What yeah. what, what type what type of drivers are are you looking for, and how are you going by looking for them? Hmm. Well, we were using a uh, driver recruiter. Mm-hmm. Also, Facebook used some of the groups. I mean, really and truly, social media is your new age uh, word of mouth because mm-hmm. you have access to so many different people and you can build an instant connection with them, right? Just by a video or a post. So those are really the main two. Have you ever have you ever came by have you ever came by a driver that that you brought on that just didn't work out? Mm, no, because the majority of all the drivers they've been on operators. They haven't been in any of the trucks. Okay. But I have to say uh like what I was telling you, I buy trailers. My thing, our thing is trailers. Real estate on wheels. You know? Mm-hmm. So that's the objective. It's less maintenance. You don't have to really worry about it. All it is, lights, brakes, cross members, and floors. You know, that's easy. And air hoses. It's less moving parts than the actual truck. That's what's up, so to, man. That's, to me, up. that's a smart move. That's the ticket. The guy also told me that, man. I have a guy that I buy a lot of trailers from here. Mm-hmm. And um, all of his trailers, you wouldn't believe it, they go for under 5000 and these trailers are like 2003, 2004 trailers, you know, real good trailers. They're decent for what I'm doing. You know, they could be used for storage. And I do regional runs, so they all pass DOT inspections. All right. A lot of people go broke with the equipment, man, and I don't like uh, Hold on right quick. I, hold on. Hold on. Okay. All right. All right, I heard I heard you say they go broke with the equipment. Say that again. A lot of people mm-hmm. they overspend and sometimes, you know, they they empty the funds, you know, they break the bank buying equipment, want it to look good, you know. Just because the equipment looks good doesn't mean it's gonna always operate properly. Exactly. There's a lot of people that a lot of especially a lot of new people that's that's coming into the industry that's that's you know that say hey I'm I want to go in and jump right into the truck but end up but end up failing the whole process of it you know yeah without without understanding you know without understanding the truck itself you know I was told you know I was told from an old school guy too he was like yo know your truck once you know your truck, then you'll be able to understand your truck and you'll be able to understand what your truck can do. If you right. don't, if, if if you don't, then, you know, when your truck breaks down, you're going to be sitting on the side of the road like, <laughs> you know, now as a company <laughs> driver, it doesn't matter, you know, to me. Matter. You're getting paid by it, I'm, I'm getting paid, you know, by, you know, by detention, by, by you all know, by detention, by layover and all like that, by breakdown pay. It doesn't matter, you know, and that's what I was trying to tell old school. Like, yo, I'm a company driver, so when this truck breaks down, I'm not going to, you know, the man tells me I, I got, you know, I got a road service coming out to take care of you. Okay, cool. Go back in, <laughs> yeah. slap it in, slap it in <laughs> sleeper berth. Hop back there in the back, put the covers on if I'm cold, or turn the, or or raise the window <laughs> down when I'm hot, and I'm the a to turn on the TV with the APU. Yeah, we good, and we good. I'm gonna go back there and chill. But when you, but on the flip side, when you are owner operator, see that's the difference right there, and that's why I said, yo, I I appreciate where you coming from because 
if you break down on the side of the road and if it's something that you can fix, you goddamn right I'm going to go in and Jimmy rig it. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? But I, I have to say this right here. I have to say this, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, a guy also told me, you know, there's a lot of a lot of different opinions in the industry. A lot. But one that one that always sticks with me is, you know, I didn't buy a truck to become a mechanic. Oh, fuck yeah. There, there you go. <laughs> Thank that you. That right there sticks with me. But you can't be afraid to turn a wrench. Right. You need to get yourself out of a tight bind. Right. right? And I'm the type of guy, even though I know personal mechanics, right? I got, I know a lot of them, man. I got, uh, but I was, if recently I didn't know why my trailer lights weren't working. I was getting power to my all, the whole trailer. As soon mm -hmm. as my, you know, my pigtail touch, it was grounding out. You know, right. the whole trailer was powerized. So I had to run a ground. I couldn't figure it out for three days. I had two mechanics come out. They couldn't figure it out. I had another one come out. My buddy had always used Daniel. Man, he came uh, right. One of his old school buddies he said, man, let me tell you about this, John, yada, yada, yada. Right then and there, man, less than five minutes. It was working. All the lights. He 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 knew he knew what to do and how, exactly. how to take care of it. Experience is a teacher that you probably would never have if you don't go through it. You know? and, and you know so, you touch on you you touch on that on on that saying very prevalent man because a lot of a lot of old school drivers they they really think that you know by being a driver you 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 coming in not only to be the driver but to be a diesel mechanic as well yeah, <laughs> you nah. know what i'm saying yeah you you can't take all the money sometimes like if you don't spend the money then you missing time you know, because you're trying to, you're worried about figuring out, you're watching YouTube videos, mm -hmm. you're reading uh, the Trucker Report forums, mm -hmm. you're looking at all of these different blogs trying to diagnose a problem when all you have to do is pay a mechanic $85 to do, uh, to check it out for you, diagnose the problem, mm -hmm. figure out what it is, and now they're going to give you their hourly rate. Now that right there, they may charge you $500, but it saved you five days because it's going to take you five days. They could do it in one day. Mm. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Uh, back over to TikTok, man. How how long you been? How, how long you been on TikTok altogether? <laughs> Not long, less than six months. Six months, man. How how many followers you 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 uh, garnered so far? <laughs> right at. Man, I'm not looking at it right now, but I'm gonna tell you, it's not that much. We had three thousand right now. We had three thousand. Okay, Trying to that's get us going. Okay, We're trying to get it going. That's what's up, man. Yeah. That's what's up. Out of you know, between TikTok and uh and YouTube, have have you ever thought of have you ever thought of making a making a YouTube page if you haven't already? I had one for the motivational speaking, but I never did this for real results. Never thought about doing it. Well, my wife does it. She uploads them on there. But we don't give it too much attention, right, for this page. At least I don't, personally. I... It's a lot of a lot of different, you know, a lot of different parts of the business as far as promotions, stuff like that, that we're still building the team for. All right, man. So for TikTok, man, well, how, how can everybody find you on TikTok, man? Go look us up on Real Results. Real Results, Real Results on TikTok. Transfer. That's the whole company name it for, River Resource Transportation. All right. That's what you're right. going to find us at on uh, TikTok. All right, Same man. thing on Facebook, same thing on Instagram, wherever. We're going by the full name, River Resource Transportation. Real Results Transportation out of Houston, Texas, man. All right, my J, I appreciate you coming on and all like that, you know, talking to us. You know, giving us a little bit of I background. I appreciate you, Lockout, man. Uh, no yeah, doubt. I appreciate you. No doubt. Thank you. Thank you, man. I, You know, that's what I do. I give yeah. you guys a platform, and I, I, I like to hear stories like this. I like to hear, uh, you know, young, you know, young successful uh, entrepreneurs, black, you know, black entrepreneurs out here doing their thing, whether it's in trucking or in any, you know, or in any industry that, that, uh, that, you know, they right. want to get out and, tell uh, you something. and uh, link up. I, uh, and yesterday I was speaking to a buddy of mine out of California while I was on a load. And mm -hmm. I said, man, I said, oh, it's about to work, man. It's about to work. I said, all the TikTok videos, the Facebook, I said, all of this promotion, 
something is about to take off, man. We're getting some exposure. And after I said that, that's whenever you gave me the invite, man, and I appreciate it because that was confirmation. I appreciate it confirmation, that. man. Yeah. And thank you for the opportunity to get on your platform. Not a problem, man. Thank you. Thank you for the story, man. That's that's what's up, man. I, like I said, I like stories like this of uh of young entrepreneurs coming out here trying to do their try to try to do something positive and try to instead of trying to do something scammy. You know what I'm saying? So definitely keep it yes, up, sir. bro. You, you know, much success to you and your family. Much success to uh, re- what is it? Real, real results transportation. Real you results. Know? Real results transportation. Definitely check them out on uh TikTok and Facebook. And brother, man, you got you know you got a voice over here. You're a citizen. So anytime that you got anything that you want to promote or something like that, man, give me a call and uh and uh we'll put it together for you. We definitely gonna do that. I appreciate you, Lockout Man. You be safe out there. All right, man. You too. All right, brother. Later.